Hey y'all, what's going on? It's Cliff with Jam Mechanic Scale Modeling. So, Mark Batson has a video, kind of question for the community. What tools do you use? I'm going to try to make this a short video. As you can tell, my bench is in shambles, but at least we've got the, um, you know, general gist of things. So let's sit here and try to change... Uh, camera angles so let's go over the top all right so we're gonna go with the overhead view and stuff like that for right now we'll probably make a couple adjustments so one thing that I like to use is rulers this one I just picked up the other day but nice steel ruler make straight edges measurements um, you want something nice because when you're cutting styrene you don't want to cut into it. It is a lot harder on the uh, um, blade and stuff like that to cut. So, let us also get into our X-Acto knives. These right here are like your main purpose. You can get the different um, tips that you can swap out that you can swap out for your hobby knives. You can do a lot of work with these. Just these particular products. You got different blades. You can swap them out. Also, they got helping hands. Um, these things, uh, you get this at Harbor Freight. It's got a magnifying glass, but I just stripped it down. You can hold parts with. Um, kind of. This is a kit that I picked up. It's got sprue nippers just in case, which I'll get to that because I've got another pair. Some bent nose, uh, some needle nose, as well as uh, like ring players is what I call them. They've got tapered. You could probably wrap like wire up around them, whatever. Um, that works good for cutting metal. And on this side, we've got a bead thing which I think also doubles as a set of tweezers and we got a bead punch so there's that uh, continuing on uh, with cutting stuff we've got regular fabric scissors these right here and then we've got our sprue nippers these things are a wearable item um, it doesn't take much for them to get really dull really fast um, let's see what else under cutting we've got a saw since I don't have one of them razor saws I just use this hacksaw and this is a small hacksaw uh, Harbor Freight special works well for cutting um, clamp we got a little uh, clamp slide clamp that adjusts for holding parts together, needle nose, they're good for holding parts. File set, small file set. It's got a bunch of different tips. I use it for filing parts, they work really well and get in different areas. Um, of course, I'm just throwing tweezers all over the place. We got tweezers, different styles, different sizes. Um, they always come in handy for holding parts, picking up parts. Eye droppers. These work well for mixing paints, mixing fluids. Um, Q tips. And these fancy arrow tip um, Tamiya sticks for applying stuff. They work really well for, like I said, applying stuff or burnishing um, a pen for when you want to make marks and stuff like that. And then, kind of going along, you got just regular clips, clotheslines. You picked up these alligator clip things. They work well for holding parts. And if you get the fancy stand, you can get this from there, or you just take a piece of wood, drill some hole in it, I ended up going, uh, I don't know, pre-made way, 
um, but you get some of these skewers that have got, they work well for holding painting. These work well for holding parts, as you can tell. And you can do quite a bit with them. You can get different sizes. They got these plastic dollar store ones. These ones are nice. You can get them in multiple sizes. A couple of them, pretty cheap. Uh, so, it's kind of, we're jumping all over here, but we're trying to keep this video short. We got a couple different glues. We got some Tamiya. Yeah, we got some of the Tamiya cement. We got the red top testers, green top testers. This is for like metal and wood. Um, we got some thin and ultra thin. Whoop. We got some thin, ultra thin Tamiya. We've also got Mod Podge, which works good for doing lights clear. Um, even mocking up some parts. I did just buy some crazy glue because sometimes the um, resin stuff does not um, hold together well. So that's why I got the crazy glue. Um, let's see. Now, sprue goo, save one of your uh, glass jars uh, with a little bit. Of, I want to say that to me or to me extra thin or... You can use lacquer thinner and uh, acetone, which we've got acetone right here. You can get that at the um, Walmart, wherever they sell nail polish, and you put styrene in here, and you let it set, and what it does, it melts, and it works really well as far as a filler. we got different kinds of tape different sizes masking tape fine line tape tamiya tape ak tape just regular dollar store um duct tape packaging tape or not masking tape you got different stuff that works pretty decent i mean you know it's pretty good we've also got um our drill vise and our drill index this works good for punching holes um, we got small gauge wire which you can use for multiple purpose I've got solder here um, thin gauge solder make for like brake lines and whatever else you want to wire fuel lines brake lines um, especially want to get into detailing um, I also use regular sheets, but they got some different sanding sticks here, different grits, different, um, yeah, you can get it in different grits. I like these ones because they bend, and you can get them into all sorts of weird angles that you need, and these are just regular, you go to, uh, like, Dollar Store, you can buy these. These ones are ones I picked up at, uh, Hobby Town, but, uh, and this one's one I picked up at Hobby Town, and this other bendable one. I think it was like a buck fifty or something like that. I think these ones were like three dollars, but you can go to the dollar store and get them cheaper. Um, yeah, always good to have a set of needle nose uh, tweezers. Uh, Sharpie marker, black for marking out stuff, like especially your body lines. Gold for doing trim. There's also silver one that I can't find, but your Sharpie markers. You also got multi pen, which is good for doing your chrome. This one is my uh, fat tip. So you can get that. I've also heard of people taking it and uh, using it for spray. Um, right in their air gun, like spraying multi. So a wire brush. This has actually got steel bristles on it. I have a nylon one somewhere that I can't find, but... It was like dollar store special, three brand set, and it works good for kind of just burnishing and whatever uh, you want to do, especially when you're doing the weathering and the salt chipping. And then this thing right here I just picked up the other day. This is a little dimple wheel, and it actually works well for rivets. I want to give a shout out to, um, well, Ryan over at RPM Games. He made a comment about it. And I believe there is probably someone else, but so we're just going to take this piece of aluminum and 
run this over. Cocksucker, stay flat. So depending on which way you want your rivets, I don't know how well that's going to work. Shit. You know, let me try maybe doing this side. Oh, well, maybe, I don't know. But you can see a little bit of the rivet in there. Let's go the other way with it. And we'll do it from the dimple side on the steel. Like I said, depending on which direction you're going in your aluminum, because you can make body panels with, you can make rivets with this little tool. Now, this is for quilting, but you can get it in a fabric department. Um, let's see, for paint, assorted paint brushes. Um, normally I use uh, tester brushes and I've got uh, mineral spirits that I use, but I use the tester brushes. They work really well. That's pretty much what I grew up with and working with enamels. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, weathering powders. So weathering powders, these things are always good for doing weathering now. These are compacts. I picked these up at the dollar store. And you can get a lot of similar results to, the, to me a weathering powder. Um, and it doesn't take a whole lot of money to break the bank. So, I mean, you know, you pop open the compact and this actually I use the applicator to just kind of slap it on, but it looks like dust. And then this looks like a little bit mud. You got different colors. Uh, so that works like your Tamiya weathering powders. Um, I got a Tamiya paint stand finally, but... What I was using prior is I was just using this, basically like a paint can that doesn't work. This one's broken. It's full of paint. Um, so I just rigged up a paper clip or a clothespin with an alligator clip so I can go through and hold, you know, whatever I want on there. So when I'm painting, I can just... Um, let's see. Also, another thing uh, for kind of along the line of paint, I do a lot of rattle can, but I also have a paint mixer. Now, this paint mixer, I want to give a shout out to James Morris. Um, it's a electric knife, and I got a pill bottle which I can put different size bottles in. I got some foam kind of padding in there. Take. The and normally I just put the top on, put top on like so, and it does pretty good. Instead of doing this, you know, get it all on the wrist, for those who got bad wrist, that actually works out well. Also, on the side here, we have a Dremel tool. This one I think I need to replace the bearings in. It's an old Dremel, but... I got a little sanding disc. I got a couple cutoff wheels somewhere. I can't find the cutoff wheel at the moment because um, I was ill prepared for this and I just drew it together this morning. So we got that in. We also have a cordless drill that works well for doing larger stuff, smaller stuff, whatever. You could actually probably put the same chuck in a drill and use it as a sander. So. Um, let's see, what else do we have here as far as tools? Um, I believe I've kind of covered everything that, oh, I use. I forgot. Cheesecloth. Or, well, it's not necessarily cheesecloth, but it's tack cloth. So, what I normally do before I paint everything, um, sometimes, especially in between coats, I'll use this to get off the small debris that comes on there because I don't use a paint booth and I probably should. Um, I've also got these polishing pads that I've never used. They're alpha abrasive. Um, 
I should probably use them more and work on polishing up my my rides. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Then we got different sheets of sandpaper. We got a mixing palette for mixing different stuff. We got the nye reel gloves so that you don't get your dick beaters all covered in paint and whatever else you're doing. I got to get better at using them sometime. And my chrome stripper. So what this is is basically a bunch of 409 oven cleaner that I sprayed in a bag. Picked this up from Ollie's. It's got to be the yellow top or the heavy duty stuff. And... What you do is you spray it in a plastic bag, and now what you do is you take your chrome parts and put the chrome parts in the plastic bag. Let them set in there for a little bit, strips of chrome right off them, and then you end up getting parts. Where well, did I just put it? Of course. So this back piece right here was chrome. Well, I threw it in there and it stripped it off in like a couple minutes. So take the oven cleaner, put it in a plastic bag. And that'll actually work out pretty good. Um, let's see, anything else? Um, yeah, that's pretty much about it, what I've got. Um, as far as stuff that I use to help me kind of around the shop. So let's uh, change camera angles here. All right, and we're back. So, yeah, so that was just kind of like a quick shot of the tools. I know it wasn't as well presented as a lot of the other content creators, but you know what? I make do with what I got. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot about it. I can actually, but I can use this to, um, so this here is my cool fancy lighter. And candles. I put them on a plate. These are those little tea candles. These work well. You light these and then you hold the plastic part over it. And then I forgot a bowl. This is actually a glass bowl. Fancy. Got gold trim on it. I put a little bit of water, a little bit of dish soap, mix it up, and I put my decals in there. So um, that was the two other things that I had forgot to uh, add while I was in the other view. But um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, need any help or any tips, you know, just reach out. But this is my video in reference to uh, Mark Bats and what tools do you use. So, with that being said, this is Cliff with uh, GI Mechanic Scale Model, and I'm signing off. See ya.